Hello! So over the last week I've done a lot of additions to the game engine. Um, this game engine is written in Go. If you don't know, I have a bunch of other videos um, recently about it. Um, I'm going to go over mostly what I did today because that's when most of the cool stuff came in. Um, so yeah, we're going to create a project called Solitaire. Solitaire, I think that's how you spell it. Desktop, new, solitaire. So what you'll see is when I create a new folder, it uh, it selects the folder that I just created, so that's a quality of life I added. Um, so you just click the select button from there. I'm going to create this one, and then we're going to go add some content. So here on the desktop, I have some card artwork. So one of the new additions here is you can shift-click to select a range. Um, it used to be shift-click would kind of do what control-click does and select sporadically. But this makes it so you can click at the top, go to the bottom, shift click, and then select to import all of those. Now we have them um, in here where you can shift click in here as well. I haven't shift added the shift click for range right now, so shift clicking just appends that particular one. Um, control click also works in here. So now with the multi select, it allows you to select multiple things and add in uh, tags. I will add the shift range select soon because it's a little annoying not to have it. But let's say that we wanted to add a tag for all the the hearts cards here. So if I come in and I shift click all these guys, uh, you'll, what you'll notice is um, if it's halfway off or slightly off, um, when you select it, it will bring it into view. So this ace of hearts is a little weird. I think the texture just didn't load. Um, but we'll add it anyway. So we'll select them all and we'll type in hearts. And now um, you'll see each one has this hearts tag attached to it that we can then filter by down here. So next we'll take a look at the new data binding enums. So if I go to the stage, we'll go to the 2D view and we'll bring in a card back here and we'll make it sized a little bit better, 0.446. And what we're going to do with this card back is we want to add some card code to it. So let's create a new entity data. This is just data you can bind. It's like a component in Unity or or a blueprint in, in Unreal. So um, we'll call this entity data card data. Why not? And we'll create a folder cards, which will be its package. And we'll create that. So that'll open up uh, this here. And what we're going to do is for the card data, we want to add two things, face, face, and um, suit, suit, into our plain old data. And then we will create a card consts.go. And this is, I'm just going to fill this out real quick, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so we have uh, a couple of types here. We get a face and a suit. And you'll notice that we have enums set up here. Um, well, what would effectively be enums? And this works with strings and everything else. Um, this iota is also, uh, I wrote a parser for the iota. So we'll kind of look at it and then we'll go back and um, we'll come back and explain a little bit more of it. So if we go back in here and we select our card and we press the C key to search, we're going to add that cards card data we just created. And you'll notice that the, the face here uh, it looks like text box. I'm going to have a little icon for drop down on select, but if you click on this, it's actually a select box, and all of those enums are in there, so I could say it's an ace of spades. So um, that enum drop down is magically picked up um, by this kind of format, the typical enum formatting. This also supports if you want to do something like iota, uh, iota plus two times five, like this is supported. I wrote a parser in here to do the equations here and figure out what the numbers are. So, um, yeah, that's the new enum data binding that we have support for. Like I said, you can use strings here as well. You can also change the order of this. Um, if you want to do it this way, you can do it this way too. It'll, it'll still be picked up. So the last thing that I want to go over the last major thing we, we did today, or I did today, I should say, is um, con uh, the, what I call table of contents. So the typical way of you getting content, let's say that I want this 
two of spades here, I'd right click it and copy the ID to the clipboard. And then I could do whatever I want to it. Uh, cost two of spades, right? And I can reference it directly inside of my code here and I can spawn the texture or do whatever I want. That's a little bit cumbersome if I want to go through and say have all the cards and be able to pick a card dynamically. Having to know each ID and like right click, copy, right, copy, right, copy uh, is a little cumbersome. So let's say that we wanted all the aces. So we're going to search for um, ace here. Um, this texture is bothering me. We'll, I'll, I'll figure that one out. Let's click for kings or king, not kings. Um, yeah, so we have uh, the beautiful kings and then we have the regular face king, uh, uh, suit kings here. So let's say we wanted to add all these kings together inside of a table of contents. If I click on each one that I want here and then right click on any of them and say create table of contents, I can name this kings doc or whatever. And that'll give us this kings table of contents uh, file here. And if we right click on that, we can select view and you'll see that we have uh, the key on the left and the ID on the right and this key is searchable directly in the game uh, in your game code so you can instead of using these you know these uh, constants or these strings you can actually just use king underscore of underscore clubs on this table of contents so you would get this table of contents and then you can pull it so um, what else you can do here, let's say I don't want the, this king of spades, I want the other one, so I'm going to click X on that to remove it. And then you'll see the updated table of contents here in the log. And here's the other king of spades. So I'm going to select that king of spades, then right click on my uh, king's table of contents. And just say add, table, uh, add to table of contents. And then if we view it, that king of spades 2 will be in there. Now this name does not have to match the content name here. Um, I'm planning on later on being able to one add content from this view here and not have to right click add and two be able to change the label you you have here for searching that way in the code you can have like kings un, uh, king underscore of underscore and then just append which one you want and just dynamically pull it without having to have this ID on hand so the way you would use this table of contents is you would right click on this guy and copy its ID to clipboard and it would be like king King's TOC will be that ID, and then you would pull this content from the content archive, um, like host dot uh, asset database read King's TOC, and this will give you that um, King's TOC file uh, file data or whatever, right? And then you would convert this file data to um, the contents you're looking for, or to the table, and then you'd be able to select from it. And I can show further later on how to do that in depth, but I just kind of want to go over what uh, table of contents are. So that's uh, the update for today. There's a ton of tiny little fixes and changes that I've added in, and I'm going to be adding more. Um, the way that I add changes is basically I try to make a game in it, and then every roadblock I hit, um, I then go and update. So for example, one, one of those little things is I want to be able to select this and rename it by pressing F2. So now if you press F2, you'll notice the, um, the text automatically highlighted up here. And when I, by adding that particular code, I added, um, keyboard hotkeys events. So in the future, we'll be able to go to settings and actually change the hotkeys for things. Um, I don't know if I talked about it before, but we have a refresh rate. So on my laptop, I use 30 because it saves battery. And then we have a UI scroll speed because some laptop touchpads are kind of finicky. You can set it to one if you're using a normal like touchpad that has pixel precision. Um, otherwise, you can play around with these values. And if you wanted to go backwards, you could do like negative 20 or whatever. Um, I don't know what this area is. We'll ignore it for now like it didn't happen. Um, so cool. That's the update for now. I hope to see you guys later. Uh, join us in Discord. Check out my uh, my Twitter, my X. I, I post a lot of updates on there. So, um, cool. See you guys later. Uh, oh, also, this is an open source repository. If it's your first, your first time seeing this, um, you can check it out on GitHub. Cool. Have a good one. Happy Thanksgiving.